Hello and welcome to this video. This video is going to be going over what is known as the Alice in Wonderland Syndrome. First described in 1955, Alice in Wonderland Syndrome is a term applied to altered bizarre perceptions of the size or shape of a patient's body or other objects. It is a disorienting neurological condition that affects human perception of the senses of vision, hearing, touch, sensation, and the phenomenon of time. The name refers to Lewis Carroll's well-known children's book, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, in which the title character experiences alterations of sensation in which she felt that her own body had grown too small or too tall, or parts of her body were changing shape, size, or relationship to the rest of her body. A description of symptoms associated with Alice in Wonderland syndrome was first published in the medical literature by Caro Lipman in 1952. He described two patients who experienced the sensation of becoming short and wide during attacks of migraine headaches. One patient referred to the sensation as a Tweedledum or Tweedledee feeling, referring to the short barreled shaped characters depicted in Lewis Carroll's 1871 sequel to Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, entitled Through the Looking Glass and What Alice Found There. Lipman claimed that he had discovered that certain patients with migraines experienced unique hallucinations relating to their body image, distortions of their entire body, or certain parts of their body. He recorded the hallucinations of seven patients, some of whom felt that their body had split in half and the remaining half had either shrunk or grown excessively large. Some of Lipman's patients were reluctant to explain their odd feelings as they believed they would be considered crazy. One patient felt that she was about a foot tall during or before the onset of her headache, and the patient confirmed that she was hallucinating when she gazed at her reflection in the mirror and saw that she was actually her normal height. Another patient stated that, I got tired from pulling my head down from the ceiling. My head feels like a balloon. Other distinct hallucinations include animals. These hallucinations can involve swarms of small animals such as ants or beetles and mice, or isolated groups of large animals such as tigers and even elephants. These types of hallucinations are referred to as zoopsia. Similarly, depth perception can be altered, where distances look incorrect. For example, a corridor may appear to be very long, or the ground may appear too close or too distant. Over the past 60 years, Alice in Wonderland Syndrome have come to include 42 visual symptoms and 16 non-visual symptoms. What these symptoms have in common with each other is that they constitute distortions of sensory perception rather than hallucinations or illusions. Hallucinations are experienced in the absence of an appropriate stimulus from the outside world, such as a voice heard in the absence of sound production, or a cat seen where no cat is actually there. Illusions do have a source in the outside world, albeit one that is often fleetingly misperceived or misinterpreted. Thus, music may be heard in the drone of passing traffic, and a curtain moving in the wind may be mistaken for an intruder. Like illusions, distortions are based on sensory impressions, but they feature highly specific changes and highly specific aspects of the sensory input picture. For example, all straight lines may be perceived as wavy, which is known as dysmorphopsia, or vertical lines as slanted, plagiopsia, all stationary objects as moving, kinetopsia, or all eyes as unnaturally big, which is known as prosop metamorphopsia. The duration of symptoms of Alice in Wonderland syndrome tend to be short, mostly on the order of minutes up to days. However, some symptoms may also persist for years or even be lifelong. I imagine that if one half of your body is distorted perceptually and you live with that for years at a time, it must be very uncomfortable. The exact prevalence of Alice in Wonderland syndrome is unknown. The lack of epidemiologic studies on a large scale, coupled with the lack of universal accepted diagnostic criteria, casts a shadow on reported data 
that should be considered carefully. Although it is generally assumed that the syndrome is rare, clinical studies among patients with migraines indicate that the prevalence rate in this group may be up to 15%. For instance, out of 166 published cases of Alice in Wonderland syndrome, the most common cause is migraine followed by infections, brain lesions, medication, drugs, and psychiatric disorders. Alice in Wonderland syndrome does not feature in major classifications such as the ICD-10 and the DSM-5. The differential diagnosis of Alice in Wonderland syndrome and its individual symptoms is complex as it involves at least three levels of conceptualization. First, the symptoms need to be distinguished from other positive disorders of perception, such as hallucinations and illusions, with which they may be easily confused. Second, their most likely cause needs to be established. Therefore, third, whether the diagnosed condition may be responsible for mediating the symptoms must be established. Because such distortions are also experienced by individuals in the general population, situations may arise in which the disorder diagnosed is not causally connected with the symptoms at hand or in which a therapeutic intervention turns out to be the actual case. Most non-clinical and clinical cases of Alice in Wonderland syndrome are considered rather benign in the sense that the full remission of the symptoms can often be obtained, sometimes spontaneously and in other cases after treatment. However, in clinical cases with an underlying chronic condition, such as migraines, psychosis or epilepsy, symptoms tend to reoccur in concordance with active phases of the disease. As a consequence, the need to treat requires careful assessment, proper knowledge of the natural course of the various underlying conditions, and a careful explanation to the patient of what to expect from which therapeutics under which circumstances. So to sum up, Alice in Wonderland is a rare disorder that causes disorientation and distorted perception. It features disruption to the way in which a person perceives their senses and body image, other things around them, or the passing of time. The syndrome mostly affects children, but symptoms can begin at any point in life. Its treatment is not direct, but relies on identifying and treating the underlying causes. Not much is yet fully understood about Alice in Wonderland syndrome, and as often as the case, more research needs to be done in order to determine whether an effective and direct treatment is actually possible. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, maybe consider giving it a like. And if you're feeling particularly generous, even subscribing to the channel. As always, I anticipate reading your comments with enthusiasm. Thanks for watching.